sum of all forces equals ma, second law of Newton, Newton's second law, that the sum of all external forces acting on the particle is equal to the mass and the particle multiplied by the acceleration a in of the particle in a certain direction. Right, so we identified how you're going to go. The first step is you need to go and decide your coordinate system. So in this case, and all the tutorials passed, we did the Cartesian coordinate system, which has got x, y, and z directions. You can see the i, j, and k. K with a little dot showing it's coming out of the page. Those are usually the positive directions of those three vectors. Once you've drawn the free body diagram, we need to go and apply the equations of motion to get all the scalar component forms of these vectors. All right, so the equation of motion can be broken down into two equations. One that is just all the x direction components of the vectors, and the other equation is all the y component, or all the y components of the vectors on the free body diagram. So that, so the sum of all forces equals ma can be broken down into the x one, which is the i's, and the y, oh, the j, which is the y direction. So that would be the next step once you've finished your free body diagram, you now need to break down the vectors into their i, j, and k components. Yeah, and you look at each one separately, basically. All right, so for the example of the bloodhound, you could see last time we had the, f the thrust force that is being generated by the engine, and the free body diagram in a sense is literally just the force generated by the thrust equals your kinetic diagram showing you the direction of travel. Now, if we go and we say 20% of the max thrust is being generated currently, so that is 20% of 90 kilonewton of thrust, that equals 18 kilonewton and the mass is 6,422 kilograms, we can now go and calculate its acceleration. So F equals MA, in this case it's just the X direction, so we don't need to bother with the Y direction. The only force currently on that body diagram where we're not taking into consideration any friction or air resistance at the moment, it's just the thrust force. So FT equals MA, we know the value of FT, we know the value of M, we put it all together and we get the acceleration a subscript x which is essentially acceleration in the x direction and because the car is not taking off not flying away there is no y component so that is literally its only acceleration component so that is a very simplistic one with just one direction this was last week we drew the free body diagram so now it's your turn to now go and use the actual values that we've that i'm giving you here to now go and calculate the acceleration of this block. So similarly, like last week, if you still have got it in your notebooks, the first thing you do is to draw the free body diagram to make sure you get all the forces and know exactly what direction they are. And then you start breaking all the vectors down into their separate components. And then you use the three equations or you use Newton, Newton's second law for the X direction components as well as the y, con y direction components and you solve it. All right, so I'm gonna draw the free body diagram for you so that everybody sees what it, how it is. So first thing we need to calc or determine the coordinate system, which in this case, I'm going to go there. All right, so to the right is positive X, upwards positive Y, and now I'm going to draw the block. There is a force Mg that's going downwards as a result of its weight. Then we've got this P component here. Got a normal force going upwards and we've got a frictional force FR going to the left. Those are the four forces and I'm telling you that this is 30 degrees. All right, now you need to go and get all the sum of the forces in the X direction and you need to get sum of all the forces in the Y direction and that equals the mass AX and the mass AY. All right, so that's the next thing. The majority of them is going to be going into either one. So this N and the MG will be going into the FY equation, the FR and the component of this P the x1 will go into the x value, and then the x, the y component of the p will also go into the y equation. So this one here will be some sort of py and px. Using uh, trigonometry, you can uh, calculate these, four co these two components, knowing p is 400 newtons. You know py, px is 400 
plus 30, and PY is 400, then 30. And there you've got all the components you need. So now you need to all bunch them together into the X components and Y components and solve for A. All right, let's go through it. So hopefully every one of you have done it now. So first we obtain the free body diagram, which I've shown. I did not do the kinetic diagram, but here it is for those that are interested. It's a block showing you the direction of movement. Very straightforward. All right, so then the sum of all forces in this case is the external force P plus mg plus n plus the frictional force. That's all four of them. All, you can see all of them are vectors being bold written. And now we need to go and break them all up in their components. And when we do that, they become scalars with the corresponding i, j unit vectors. So in this case, we break the p-force up in its x and y components. And you get 346.4 newtons for px, and py is 200 newtons. So you can rewrite the p vector, which is 400 newtons. You can write the 346.4 times the I vector, I unit vector, plus 200 J vector. So those are, you can see both of them has got positive signs, meaning they are in the positive direction of the two X and Y coordinate systems. All right, so now we can go and decompose F equals MA into its X and Y components. So all the X forces are added together. In this case, it is the X component of the external force P, um, as well as the frictional force as a result of the movement. And you can see it is a negative force because it's in the opposite direction of movement. So that's PXI minus FX, F, FX, I. So those are the only two forces that's in the X direction. One is positive direction, one is negative direction. And the same can be done for in the Y direction. Here we have the Y component of the of force P, as well as the mass that is going downwards, that's why it's negative, and you get the positive normal force NY. All right, so we got our two equations, but looking at that, we've got three unknowns. So we got both components of acceleration, AX and AY, which is unknown, and we also don't know what's the magnitude of the normal force N subscript Y. So we need another equation, and in this case, we can calculate friction as the friction coefficient times the normal force. So there's our third equation. So we've got three equations, three unknowns. We should be able to solve it all now. All right, let's do this. First, consider the normal force. So in you look at all the Y component forces, you can go and solve for the unknown NY, and then you get the normal force is 290 J. You can see it's positive, meaning it is in the upward direction. A lot of you assumed that the normal force equal the weight going downwards and they cancel each other out. If there was no external forces, yes, that would be the case. Something that stands still, you get the weight pushing down onto the earth or onto the surface and you get a force that reacts and push upwards. So for me, standing right here, I am not accelerating, I'm standing still. There, my weight is pushing down and there's a normal force pushing back up. But in this case, there's an external force P at an angle, so it got, it's got a, comp a Y component, and that then caused the normal force to decrease in magnitude because of that. So do not make that assumption. It's not always the case. Always go back to adding up all the, all the forces, Y components, and then that will show you what the magnitude is. In this case, it's 290.5 J. All right, so now we got the magnitude of the vector NY. Next up, we now go and solve for the frictional force. So you just go take 290.5 multiplied by 0 0.3, and you get the magnitude of 87.15 Newton. That is the frictional force being exerted on the block while it's moving. Now that we got that, the last there's only one equation to solve, which is essentially all the equation for the x direction. Only unknown there is acceleration in the x direction, so you can add in all your values, solve for ix, and you get ax is 5.19i, meaning it's in the positive direction of the x-axis. What is the value of a's y component? So we've calculated the x component, what is the value of the y component? Zero, yeah, it is not accelerating upwards, so it is zero. So A, the vector A only has one component, that is the X component, and that is the final answer. Now that we've done an example, 
Here is your recipe for success. First thing, draw a free body diagram. I cannot tell you how important this is. It gives you an idea of the forces, where they are, what direction they are, and where they're exerting onto the body. The external force, it can help you see any trigon trigonometry relationships that you can use to calculate the components of the external forces. It's really helpful for you to first draw a free body diagram before you get started with these questions. Free body diagram first and foremost, and then next up you need to go and break all the forces apart into their components and add them all to the equations. So MAX equals the sum of all the forces in the X direction, and MAY equals all the forces in the Y direction. So those are the two equations that you generate afterwards, and then all you can use those two, two equations to then solve for the unknowns. Like now with the example, we had a third equation, which is essentially the frictional force. You can use the frictional force equation as well. And then you should have everything you need to get the answer. Yeah, so don't forget the friction as well as the reaction force. The reaction force, they can be reaction forces, which also can help you solve these two equations. Another example. So a vertical takeoff and landing aircraft weighs 400 kilograms, or its mass is 4,000 4, kilograms. Its engines exert a force, a force of, and the force due to air resistance is FR. So you got F subscript F, which is the force, and you get FR, which is the reaction force as a result of the air resistance. So we give you the, mag or the value of both vectors, and now we want you to calculate the acceleration of this aircraft. Now, it is currently in the air, so there is no normal force in this case. So first thing, draw your free body diagram and then break all the forces up into their components and add them into their respective equations and solve for A. Now you should have, your answer should have both an I and a J component for the acceleration in this case. All right, so there is my little drawing. You get your reaction or your thrust force. Both components are positive, so it's in the positive direction of both sides. Reaction force due to the air, get your FR here. And then you also need to remember the force as a result of gravity, Mg. So those are the three forces acting on the plane. And then you just go and you break them all up in the two components. Luckily, they've given it to you already, so you just put it in the equation. There's no additional calculations needed. So you just need to make sure that you put them in the correct equations. You can see positive 11,000, negative 1,000 of the, of the air resistance, positive 51,000, negative 1,000 of the air, and then also a negative mg because of the weight pulling down. And that equals max and may. And now you can solve each equation for the unknown ax and the unknown ay.